When I first started my channel a couple of years ago, it was because I had just finished Rayer Revelations and the Legends of the First Empire series, and I loved them, but I still had three big questions. And so of course I went online to look for those answers, but I couldn't find anything. So I decided to dig in to the books and find the answers for myself. And since I had some extra time, I figured, why not create a YouTube channel to share what I've learned? Those three big questions that I had at the time were, who exactly are the gods of Elan, which became my first video? How exactly did Royce's birth work, which became my third video? And the third question I had was, who is Galarabrin? Now it's been over two years and we've gotten new novels and we've read all the short stories, we've scoured Reddit and Discord and even gotten to some video Q and A's hosted by Sullivan. But even now we still don't know who Galarabrin is or her backstory. And it's clear that Sullivan is not planning on giving away the answer to that secret anytime soon. But Mysterious characters aren't anything new in fantasy books. You know, Lord of the Rings has Tom Bombadil and Wheel of Time has Nokomi. But that doesn't mean we don't know anything about Galarbrin. And in fact, there's quite a few hints and scraps and pieces of information in the books. And that's what we're going to focus on today. And then once we've done that, we're going to dig into some of the prevailing theories about Galarabrin's true identity. So, let's start with the basics. We first meet Galarabrin when she is in the living world as Mina, Sori's wolf companion. At the end of Age of Swords, Sori sacrifices Mina to create a sentinel. It is at this point that Sori discovers Mina's true name of Galarabrin though she and us as the reader still do not know anything about Galarbrin's true nature. Then, as we continue on in the series and start to reach Age of Death and Age of Empire, we learn about the different places of the afterlife, including Rel, Nifril, Allison, and the Sacred Grove. And it is said only one person has ever proved worthy of the Sacred Grove, known as the Greatest Hero or the Guardian, Ilan explains who the Guardian is by stating, The greatest of the great, of course. Eaten exempted from mortality, those he decreed were the most worthy. But by setting the requirements so high, only one has ever met his standards. She is the third to enter this place. You see, the Guardian has been granted the privilege to freely travel both the realms of the living and the dead. As such, she needs no key to enter this place. With just a few brief exceptions, she has guarded Aluria's body, slept on her roots, and kept watch for the end of days for the Golrock. The Guardian will not allow any desecration of Aluria, and for that reason, the greatest hero stands her vigil, guarding the body of my firstborn against any who might do her harm. But given the task that lies before you, she may once again take a leave of absence to offer assistance. It is at this point that Bryn, of course, learns that the greatest hero is Galarbrin, aka Mina. So now that we have a starting point, let's take a look at what we know or think we know so far. Galarbrin is her true name, and she's been deemed worthy by Eaton and therefore can travel the worlds of the living and the dead. One note about the second point though, when Mari is explaining to Bryn about the same subject, she says, Eaton gave an exemption from his laws for those who prove themselves deserving of his trust. For them, death has no hold. They alone have the freedom to go where they will and do as they please. Sadly, only one has been found worthy. I like this statement because we have to remember that Eaton, as a deity, isn't known to be a perfect embodiment of morality. In fact, our other characters like Elan, when they describe him, 
show that he has many human-like flaws like stubbornness and frustration and envy. And so that's important because being deemed worthy by him probably isn't just about being the perfect moral character or really heroic, but instead also being trustworthy to him and respectful to Eaton. For some more facts about Galarbrin that we already know, we know that Galarbrin has chosen to spend her time in the Sacred Grove guarding the body of Aluria. But we also know that she's taken some brief breaks to go into the world of the living or the world of the dead. The one break we of course know about is when she becomes Mina and goes and assists Suri. But all of this brings up a question. How long has Galarbrin actually been around? This can be a confusing topic among readers because of this interaction of Bryn and Elan discussing who has entered the Sacred Grove. Yes, you are indeed the fourth. Turin, of course, is the first. Then he returned with Phenelaeus. And the third? The greatest of the great, of course. This interaction makes it sound like, chronologically, Glarabrin is the third to enter. Which means she didn't enter until after Phenelaeus, which would have been something like in the past uh, 2300 years from when Bryn entered. But this seems to be contradicted when Elan states, The Guardian, except for a few brief absences, extended holidays so to speak, she has protected this place for eons, since the early days. Fear not, she is merely making her presence known. She doesn't like anyone to get too close to Aluria, my firstborn. So the fact that Elan says Galarbrin has been there for eons and since the early days, it makes it sound like she's been there for a long time. Which means in the prior passage, when Elan said that Glarbrin was the third to enter the Sacred Grove, she probably wasn't actually talking about chronologically, you know, after Turin and Phenelaeus. So for our next fact about Glarbrin, let's say Glarbrin is really old. Alright, now let's switch directions a little bit and see what we can learn about Glarbrin from how other characters react to her. And let's start with Trilos. Here's what he says when he meets her in the Sacred Grove. You, Galarabrin, you would stop me? Are you aware your name has become synonymous with the beasts of destruction? Ironic, don't you think? More than anyone, how can you defend Turin? So I think we can take two things from this interaction between Trilos and Galarabrin. First, since Trilos thinks that it's ironic that the word Glarbrin is now associated with beasts of destruction, that perhaps Glarbrin had something to do with creation in her life. And the second thing is, Trilos definitely seems to think that Glarbrin should oppose Turin for some reason, though of course we know it seems like she doesn't. Now, we don't know whether this is because Glarbrin has something personal against Turin or because Turin was indirectly responsible for Aluria's death, or maybe it was just the chaos caused by Turin is antithetical to who Glarbrin is. Now, before we move on from Trilos, there is one more quote I want to bring up. Mina advanced, growling. I won't fight you here, Trilos told Mina. You have the advantage in this place. But then you knew that, didn't you, O oh wise one? Yet your wisdom fails you in this. Turin is evil, and you're aligning with the wrong side. The next time we meet, you shouldn't try to stop me. Mina appeared unimpressed as she stopped growling. Her hair settled, and with a swish of her tail, she turned her back on Trilos and trotted for the door. Suri followed. I mean it, Galarabrin, Trilos shouted. Stay out of it. Trilos is one of the strongest characters in all of the books and series, even if he is just a spirit at the moment. But he seems to understand that in the Sacred Grove, Galarabrin could take him. 
Now you could argue this is just because Elon would have Galarbrin's back in the Sacred Grove, uh, but that may or may not be true. And also we don't know if Trilos could take Galarbrin in the world of the living or in Pyre. He does threaten her, so he seems to think in another time and place he could overpower her. But regardless of any of those situations, Galarbin must be an extremely strong character. Okay, let's switch over to another character, Turin. Turin definitely meets Mina, but we never see him react towards her. But then, later in Age of War, we have this dialogue between Roan and Turin, who's going by Malcolm at the time. The woman lowered her hands, and after a fleeting glance towards Suri, she said, he wants her to make another Galarabrin. At the sound of the word, Malcolm turned with a curious look. Galarabrin? Roan nodded. That was her name. Malcolm thought for a moment, then nodded. Oh, I see. Yes, of course. This is a very fun moment and one that we could theorize about what Turin is exactly thinking at the moment. Uh, did Turin know that Galarabrin was Mina? We don't know. But it does seem clear that Turin knows Galarabrin, or at least knows of Galarabrin, with how he reacts to the name. All right, before we get to the theories, there are a couple of last facts that I want to add to the list about Galarabrin. First, as Mina, Galarabrin appears as a white wolf with blue eyes. Now, we don't know if that was her original form or if she changes her appearances and forms from time to time. Next, in terms of demeanor, we know that Galarabrin is very protective with how she guards Aluria, but also appears to be kind and patient with how she treats Suri. Also, other beings seem to know that a great hero has been deemed worthy by Eaton. Now, this is an interesting fact because the only two people who would have been to the Grove were Turin and Phenelaeus. So did everyone else that's in Pyre just learn through the grapevine from those two that a great hero had been deemed worthy? And finally, the last fact that I want to add to the list is that Galarbrin seems to have some sort of premonition of the future. With how she chose to leave the Sacred Grove and assist Suri, she must have known something about the coming of events. Now, this could be because she actually has foresight, like Turin and many other characters that have come in the books. Or she could be getting that information from someone who has foresight, like Alon, who she spends time with in the Sacred Grove. All right. Now that we have our lists of facts about Galarabrin, let's start in with the theories. The first theory is that Galarbrin is an ancient hero whose story we've never heard before. Now granted, this theory is kind of a bit of a cop-out, but I wanted to bring it up to get it out of the way and because it very well may be the actual answer. And now when I say ancient, I do mean ancient. Besides Eaton and Elan, the only two people who seem to even recognize the name Galarbrin are Trilos and Turin. And besides Oluria and the Typhons, those are the oldest characters in the universe. And it's kind of weird that as we travel through Pyre and all these ancient heroes are listed, there doesn't even seem to be any guesses about who this greatest hero was. And, given the fact that we don't know Galarbrin's true form, she might not even be from the line of Aesira. 
Now, we could try to go and guess scenarios uh, where Galarbrin had helped Eaton. Uh, perhaps she helped get the Typhons locked away. But all of that would just be speculation. We don't really know. But I will say, if Sullivan did ever end up writing a story like that, it could be pretty epic. All right, theory number two. Glarbrin is Alluria. This theory actually has a couple things going for it. First, Eaton was the one who killed Alluria, but we know that Eaton actually loved Alluria. First, you have to understand that Turin loved Alluria. We all did, even Eaton. So even though it was Eaton that killed her, he could have felt bad about it and brought her back in maybe just a different form. Or maybe he brought her back as a peace offering to Elan for killing her firstborn. This would also make sense why Galarbrin is known to be associated with creation. And it also makes sense why no mortals have any guesses as to who the greatest hero is. And we've talked about this in previous videos, but technically, it seems that Aluria isn't actually dead. Aluria is life on Elan, and there is definitely still living creatures and plants and organisms and people. So perhaps Aluria is just in a slightly different form. And maybe she needs to protect the Sacred Grove and her body, because that will become important at Golrock, the final battle. There are some problems with this theory though, such as how other characters react to Galarbrin, such as Alan, Torin, Trilos. For example, Alan definitely refers to Aluria and Galarbrin as separate entities. And I don't think it would make much sense that Alan wouldn't know if Galarbrin was Aluria, so she would just have to be hiding it from everyone else. Uh, Trilos also refers to them as two separate entities, um, though he would probably just have to be in the dark about it. But the problem with that is in his timeline, he knows Galarabrin, but he technically died before Aluria was killed. So that doesn't quite make much sense in his timeline. Theory number three, Galarbrin is Eaton. This theory really revolves around the fact that Eaton is an all-powerful god who's also stubborn and envious. So how could he find any mortal worthy of his gift? And perhaps he hasn't. Perhaps he's just taken on the form of Galarbrin himself. We know that he did love Aluria. And so perhaps he's spending his time protecting her remains. Like the last theory, this would explain why no mortal seems to have any guesses as to who the greatest hero is. And also like the last theory, Trilos would need to be completely in the dark about Galarbrin's true identity. The main problem with this theory is Elan, such as when she states, He and I, we don't speak much anymore. Though this could be a funny jab at how Mina doesn't really speak as a wolf. Theory number four. Galarbrin is Muriel's mother. Now this theory has been around ever since we got the line. More than anyone, how can you defend Turin? This reason that Trilos gives would have been a very personal reason for Galarbrin to be angry at Turin. But recently, we actually got a little bit of more information that might also help this theory. Of course, we know that in the story, Frey have blue eyes and humans have brown eyes. And when they have children together, a mirror, they have green eyes. Well, Muriel has greenish-gray eyes, and just recently in Fairlane, we learned that Turin 
has brown eyes. Which, if we're following the same eye color uh, solution, that would mean Muriel's mother should have blue eyes. Which, as the wolf Mina, Glarbrin does. Now beyond these two facts, there isn't a whole lot supporting this theory. It does involve a lot of speculation, but it is a fun one. And finally, there's one last small theory about Galarabrin. In Age of Death, there's kind of this throwaway line where Farrell is talking to Tesh about a story that happened thousands of years earlier. Havar of Mari stood his ground in the face of the countless Uberon that poured out of Erebus. He stood alone on the field before the Golden Gate. When everyone else fled, he remained rather than abandon his dog, which had been mortally wounded beyond help. We pleaded with him to run, to fight with us another day, but still he stayed and he died. The great Havar gave up his life because he loved that stupid dog, because he loved it. This would be a really interesting tie-in if Galarabrin had been Havar's dog. I mean, maybe the wolf form is her actual form. Those are some of the theories surrounding Galarabrin's true identity. Let me know in the comments if you think one of the theories makes the most sense, or maybe there's another theory I haven't even heard of before. I think Galarabrin is one of the most interesting and intriguing characters in all of Alon. Anyway, thanks. See you next time. Thank you so much for watching today's video. Be sure to subscribe and watch my other videos to learn more about the world of Alon and Rhaera. Thanks!